The Ford Fiesta ST is pretty much the king of the hot hatch hill. Since it launched a couple of years ago, it's found, well, global favour with pretty much everyone who's come across it. Be it due to its looks, its low price, or its buzzy little 1.6 litre turbocharged 180 horsepower engine. Here's why it's so great. Nord to 62, 6.7 seconds. Its top speed is 139 miles an hour. Compared to some of its rivals, that's not much. But it's not the power that matters in this particular car. It's how the Ford delivers it. Really simple, really nice, really linear power delivery. And then twin that with an ace little noise. It's revvy and it's shouty and it's lovely. So when you are tonking it along a road, you get the impression that you're piling on some serious speed if you keep it in the right gear, even if you're um, not. When you're on a road such as the one we're on today, you can ring it and it'll beg you just to give it a little bit more. It's a really exciting little car because you can push it. This thing's got a torque vectoring system in it. It shuffles the power around to make sure you don't fall off the road or understeer into oblivion. And if you're not a talented driver, you can still get a lot out of it. And if you are, then man, you can really spank these things around. The brakes are wonderful. And the gearbox, six-speed manual, is lovely. It's so nice. And the shift itself, it's a little notch to it, but it's nice and short, so you feel like you're doing something. Now, a lot of the problem I have with modern hot hatches is that they're too easy to drive. With this, there is one mode. You are the sport button. So if you want to drive it sensibly, you can. Whereas if you want to drive it like a complete lunatic, you don't have to press a button and enable many things to happen. You just sling it into the right gear, make sure you've got a good bit of road, and put your foot down, like this. Whoa, no, not like that, that's a sheep. <laughs> that was close, that was close. I love the fact there's no buttons to press to change it or to, to tweak it ever so slightly. The eco mode is your right foot. The sport mode is your right foot. You're in control of this. And that's something that's been sorely missing. This is kind of old school hot hatchery right here, save for the eco boost engine. It's practical as well. This is kind of the perfect package. But the best thing about it, the very best thing about it, is that it's cheap. It's a little over 17 grand to get the base Fiesta ST. That's not much money when it comes to the hot hatch land. It's a buzzy, happy little thing. It's a 10 tenths car. You can exploit it to your heart's content. It will flatter the expert or, like me, the idiot but very keen novice. Yes, yes, we all know how great the Fiesta ST is, but I think there's a couple of alternatives Alex needs to consider before he completely crowns it the king of hot hatches. So first up, here is the Renault Clio Renault Sport 220 Trophy. A wild Drew Sturm has appeared with a Renault Clio. Morning. You've brought a Clio. I have, yes. Because it's all well and good to say that everyone loves the Fiesta ST, and they do, it's a great car. I have here something that is faster to 60, has more power, and a higher top speed. Should be better. It's faster tends to be better, yes. Yes, and before you crown this the unlimited king of all hot hatches, surely you need to try out something that on paper should have this beat. In, yes, okay, so uh, talk me through it. 220 horsepower. 220 horsepower, top speed of 146 miles an hour, and 6.6 0 to 62 time. That is all round faster than my little Ford. Yes. You are right. So, before you crown this, take the key card thing, futuristic doodad, take this for a spin, 
and I think you might enjoy it more than that. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Let's have a go. So, Mr. Stern has presented me with a Renault Clio. Is it better than my Fiesta? Well, it has the potential to be because Renault Sport are basically the kings of making hot hatches. The Megan 275 is fantastic. I love that thing so much, especially in the yellow we had it. But is this one any good? I know the Clio over the years has received a bit of stick for having a flappy paddle gearbox and it not being quite as good because they switched from a naturally aspirated engine to a 1.6 turbo, but that's what the Fiesta has so really the difference here is is the gearbox and the price of course this is much more expensive than the Fiesta 220 horsepower over 200 pound foot this should be fun and I'll tell you what there are some really good bits to it it grips like nothing else you can wang it into a corner in its race mode and even though that loosens the traction control it gives you a lot more feel with the car and you get fantastic feedback through the steering it really does feel alive when you're just threading it through you can tell this is a car developed by people who want to get cars around tracks and down roads very quickly and then there's the gearbox my lovely little fiesta has a manual 6b really slick change really like it this is an automatic and it's not very good. I mean, Renault for the 220 have made a lot of changes to it because lots of people didn't like the auto box on the 200. So the paddle travel was said to be too long. So they've cut that by a third and they've made shift times a bit quicker. But it just doesn't feel very good. The paddles, there's no real, there's no feedback to them. It's like squeezing a stress ball or something like that. There's no affirmative action to it to say, yes, you have done your task. And I hate to say that because Renault Sport, this should be the car that monsters absolutely everything. But as an experience, I'm having no more fun than I would in the Ford. I'm struggling to fall in love with it. Stern is going to have to up his game if he thinks he's going to beat my Fiesta with anything. Okay, so the Clio may not have swayed Alex, but I've still got one more car to play and it's a doozy. This is the new Mini JCW. It looks brilliant because it's the Mini and they've focused on the interior far more than the good people at Ford have. Where the Fiesta ST is quite drab, this is adorned with light like toggle switches and that big heads up round display and on top of all of that I know that Alex likes the minis because he used to own one let's see what he thinks of this I hope this is Drew with something a little more convincing and it is Drew with something a little more convincing Mr Stern yes you've brought me a mini I have I gather you didn't like this so much though not a huge fan okay it was a bit of a Hail Mary but I have an ace in the hall you have a Mini. A Mini JCW. I like those, and I like that particular Mini a lot. And although the Clio on paper may have been better than the Fiesta, but didn't beat it, on paper this one looks even better. Two litre turbocharged engine, 228 brake horsepower. Zero to 62 time is 6.1 seconds if you have the automatic, which this is, and has a top speed of 152 miles an hour. So it's faster in every respect, so I want to go at that. But before I take that, you are going to take the Fabulous Fast Forward. Right, let's trade. Trade? Oh, I'm not very good at catching. Thank you. <laughs> now, Mr. Stern has excelled himself with a Mini. I have a weakness for these things. As he has said, I, I used to own one. I had the first generation of the new Mini, had the Cooper S with the supercharger on it, and I absolutely loved it. I owned it for eight years. The new JCW is a car we've shot before. We filmed it and I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant and it remains brilliant. It makes the right noises, it's comfortable, it's quick, I and mean, this is the quickest of all of the cars we've got here. It'll do more than 150 miles an hour. That's a lot of speed for a car this size in this class. That's 
maddeningly fast. And the only other car that does something similar to that in this class is the Audi S1. The interior is so nice. The materials in here are lovely. The details, the design of it. However, we're not here to talk about interiors. We're here to talk really about the drive. And it sounds great. This feels like a proper car. It's so quick. Because the wheels are at each corner, it's properly planted. So you can really give it some. The steering feedback is fantastic. It's not quite as sharp as the Clio's, but it is still pretty damn good. Now the gearbox, this is an automatic, much like the Clio, only the automatic in this is actually quite good. It's really good. The paddle feel is great. It's nice and short, but it's very clicky. Once you've done it, you're gone. It's a wonderful, wonderful bit of kit, this. It really is. But is it better than the Fiesta? That's the question. Tell you what, it's damn close, but the only thing that disqualifies this is the price. It's well north of 20 grand, more than 22,000 pounds, and that's before you start putting toys on it. So this starts to become less of a fun little thing to have on weekends and sling the kids in the back of, and more as quite a serious proposition. Whereas with the Fiesta, the ST3, the highest trim one, is 19 and a bit. And this starts at 22, that's a big difference. It does lack the engagement, this particular car, of the Fiesta though, because the Fiesta has the all-important stick shift, and that in a car like this does make a big difference. Yes, this auto gearbox is really good, but I'd love to have tried it with the manual. The manual, of course, is slightly slower. 6.3 seconds to 62 rather than 6.1, but as I'm thinking more and more with the Fiesta, it's not the numbers that matter, it's the feel you get from it. And I think, if I'm really honest with myself, I'm having more fun on these roads with the Fiesta, even though it's got less power than I am in these. This is a very, very close second. It's like that far away. So I best go back to Mr. Stern and see what he thought of the Ford. Alex still prefers the Fiesta ST, despite the fact it has the slowest zero to 60 time and the lowest top speed. All right, let's see what this thing's got. You know what? I think you might be onto something. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Who cares about what it's like on paper? This thing is awesome. Oh man, this short throw gear stick is brilliant. And the pedals are, are exactly right to do a little bit of heel toe. Oh, so smooth on the downshift if you know what you're doing. And if you don't, you've got a great car to learn in. Who cares about the best zero to 60 time when you're having this much fun? <laughs> oh. What did you think of the Mini? It's fantastic. It is, isn't it? It's a brilliant little car. It is, but oh my God. Oh my God, that's amazing. You know how at the beginning I said it's the king of the hot hatch hill? Yeah. You know how I am brilliant almost all the time? No. Well, I am because I'm right. No, you are right. After driving these two cars, which are great cars, but it's just having an automatic gearbox completely takes away the whole idea of what a hot hatch should be. I would say yes and no. I think the auto in that one is fantastic. The gearbox in that... It, <sighs> Not so much. Not so much. The paddles are too vague and they're too far away. You have to claw your way around the wheel to change gear. And mm. you can only have race mode if you're in manual mode. And it's it's just, it's a bit of a faff and it's a bit of a pain in the bum. That one's more intuitive. The interior is a lot better than both of those combined. I'll give you that. And interiors are really important to me. And the Mini is the only one where they really, really care to actually create something. It's also the most expensive. By a long margin. Yeah. See. I would be so convinced by that, but with the money I saved from not buying the Mini and buying the Fiesta, I could buy an old generation Clio 182 and have a better Clio as well as an awesome Fiesta. That's not a bad call. Yeah. That's not a bad call. 
I think I would too go for the Ford Fiesta. There's just you and your fingers and your feet, and that's all that's controlling how fast that car goes. No restrictions, no modes. It's not very soft, it's not amazingly comfortable, but out here on these roads, it just felt so alive. In terms of attractiveness, the Fiesta ST probably doesn't win, unfortunately. Okay. I'm not a big fan of minis, but the interior on that looks so good, and it's that classic mini look that everyone's come to love. And the, the trophy is, I don't know, to me it looks pre-dented. I don't like the way it's curved, but it's not, it's not an unattractive car. It's sculpted. You're right, look, looks-wise the Fiesta's not gonna win, but the Fiesta edges out on price, at least price, and then fun, and the gearbox is fantastic. I just think the, the Fiesta's got everything in the perfect balance. It's just right. Balance, it's... that's the right word. It's, it's the combination of those things. And that is a car where it can take you from a decent driver and you can learn how to really throw a car about in something that isn't, isn't so powerful that you're going to spin yourself off yeah. on the corner. You can learn how to heel and tone that car. For me, the pedals were perfect distance apart to do that. And on these roads, if you get it wrong, it's fine, it's not going to kill you. It's the difference between being powerful and being fast and feeling powerful and feeling fast. And the Fiesta just nails that. Yeah, absolutely nails it. And it proves that the statistics mean absolutely nothing. It's the slowest to 60, it's the slowest top speed, has the least amount of power. But it put the biggest smile on my face every time I got in it. Yes, and I'm the person still holding the keys for it, so I'm gonna drive it home. Oh no, I'll have to go in my lovely Mini. What do we do about the Renault though? Just leave it here. <laughs>